Hey, welcome back to Plastic Surgery Issues and Answers. I'm your host as usual, Dr. David Watts, and we have a very, very special guest here tonight, Dr. Masai Smith. He's a podiatrist based out of Philadelphia, and we've just been talking about in the first half of the show, talking about what a podiatrist actually does, the kind of patients that they take care of, etc. Now, coming out of the break, what we're going to now get a chance to see is cosmetic results of the feet. And as I was just saying before we went into the break, I, I've heard of cosmetic surgery. That's what I do every day. But this is taking it to another level, cosmetic results of the feet. And Dr. Uh, Smith is going to show us some before and after photos, which again, as a plastic surgeon and all of you all at home are used to seeing, he's going to describe them for us. And I tell you, if you have any questions about the feet, if you're a diabetic, if you have foot infections, if you have plantar warts, and I'm sure there's a host of other problems that you can have, uh, plantar fasciitis, if you have foot problems, toenail problems, I'm telling you, we have the expert here tonight. This is the time. Pick up the phone. Call in. The man is here to talk to you tonight. This is your one opportunity <laughs> to talk to this guy. He is the man. All right, Dr. Smith, take us through some of those photographs for us. So we got, you know, this is a great photograph. This is one of my earlier procedures. I had a, a young lady who, after years and years of pain and discomfort, uh, she needed me to do something with that. And so I carefully counseled her. And the important thing about cosmetic results in podiatric surgery, now, you, obviously, we can look at that, this and tell it hurts. That it must hurts. really hurt. <laughs> it hurts a lot. Because it must rub against the shoe. Exactly. She mm -hmm. had a difficult time wearing shoes. High heels were a no-no mm -hmm. um, for her, any type of shoe wear. So she came to me. And, and she also has a second-digit hammer toe. And a okay. lot of women are familiar with that. With certain type of shoes, they may wear and develop these. Well, what I had to do is I had to, I had to take that bump off. Okay. And, and and, and that's when we talk about the cosmetic results. And this is another picture is that of the surgery usually, right before. I didn't mean to interrupt, no, but sure. I just want to ask you a question. Just for the viewers at sure. home, that bump is a bony deformity. It's the bone? Sure. The bunion itself is a, it, well, it's two things. It's an angular deformity of okay. the actual bone. Okay. But because of all the rubbing and mm -hmm. things of that nature, the bone reacts and it starts developing more bone. So that's gotcha. when you have what we call hypertrophy of bone and also the bunion. That makes a lot of sense. Go ahead. So what, what, I, what I had to do is basically stra um, straighten it out. We, we um, cut the bone and kind of have to do what's called an Austin shift, where you cut the bone and shift it over. And we also had to uh, implement uh, K wires to hold it straight. But if you look at her post-op picture, and this is when we talk about, should be the following picture. Next go one, one more, mm -hmm. go one more, Justin, mm -hmm. please. The next, uh, next photo. Photograph. Here now, we go. This is her. Approximately, uh, it was approximately uh, three months later. Wow, that's a great result. Right, and and she she was extremely happy. I I'm mean, sure. We do have uh, some surgical uh, marks there, but it takes about a year, and those um, eventually start to disappear as as the skin remodels. Um, but she, she was so happy with the results. She was able to wear her shoes. She was able to um, just get around. And I can't tell her. I've had patients come to tears because they've had this situation for so long and nobody's been able to help them. So this is what I do. They've got to really feel, uh, Dr. Smith, much, much better about that because, I mean, just looking at that bony prominence, the bone sticking Absolutely. up, basically looking like a knuckle rubbing against the shoe. I am sure. They're probably walking around in, in house shoes. Just happy. Just happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that they can't even wear regular shoes, right. especially now that a lot of the shoes yeah. come to a point. I've seen a lot of Absolutely. the ladies in the right. office with that. Shoes. Absolutely. It must be tough. I know you had some more photographs for us. Can you show us some more? Absolutely. Justin, can you put Here a couple of more up for us, please? Okay, here's another one. Just an, another young lady. Um, she was actually very young. She was approximately 17 years old. And she came in with the same problem, even though this isn't as pronounced as the, other, the previous patient, but just as painful. And this is when we're getting into cosmetic results and podiatric surgery, because what happens here is I wouldn't do this surgery if she just wanted to have the bump removed. Okay. This is bothering her. It's a consistent pain, and it's uh, interfering with her daily life. When does this start? Is there an age range with this? You know, it, it, you, you know genetic issues involved. Mm -hmm. you, you ever hear the story where people get their feet from their parents and say, yes. oh, I have my daddy's feet or something like that? <laughs> and, and I 
hear that all the time. It's just genetic components, it's type of shoes you wear and things of that nature. Uh, certain people have uh, certain traits about them that would, um, uh, they, in which they would get a bunion a, whole, a lot quicker than someone else. I've had 80 year old ladies walk in my office, never had a bunion in their life, but I'll have an 18 year old that has one like she's had it for 20 years. We've got a caller on the line, Dr. Smith. Um, our first caller tonight is Kathy. Kathy, how are you, my friend? Fine. How's Great. Everyone where, are you there? Where, where are you calling from, Kathy? I'm calling from Langhorn. Great. You have a question for Dr. Smith? Yes, I do. All right. You're up, Dr. Smith. I'm ready. Go ahead, Dr. Kathy. Dr. Smith, it's terrific to speak with you. Thank you. I am six years post op a right bunionectomy. Okay. And my first toe is shorter than the second toe. It sticks up in the air. And I was wondering if you've come up with a procedure yet to lengthen the large toe because my results are five years of bilateral stress fractures. You know what, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear everything you said, but it sounded like you said you had a bunion approximately. You know what, Kathy, do me a favor. Cut down your television because we're getting some reverberation from your television. So cut down the television and just talk through the telephone for us. Okay. Can you do that? Is that better? Okay, yeah. That's and repeat better. the last part of the question for Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith. He didn't hear that. Okay. I've had three bunion me. Three. The first two had errors. The third one was to try to correct the errors. Okay. I'm six years post-op, the okay. first one. Okay. For the last five years, I've suffered bilateral stress fractures, and I'm currently out of work for a year now. Is there any procedure to lengthen the heart toe when you told so it can bring the foot back in line? You know, that's really, really difficult. Um, because, you know, really I would have to see you and take x-rays and really do a, a detailed observation. Um, it's, it's unsure. At, at, I would have to try to figure out what procedure was done, if that makes sense. And then at that particular point, develop some sort of plan. Uh, I mean, if you want, my phone number will be flashed on the screen. You know what, come in. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll give you a consultation. We'll have that scheduled for you. And we'll just have, we'll just have a good dialogue, and we'll see what, we can be, what can be done. If things can be done, I'll let you know. If it can't be done, I'll let you know that also. Beautiful. I tell you what, Dr. Smith, I think, handled that one really well. Um, the phones are lighting up for you, Dr. Smith. Again, you are the man, and everyone knows <laughs> it, so they're calling in. Our next caller on the line is Venus. Venus, how are you, my friend? Are you Hello? with us? Hi, yeah. Venus. How are you? Hi. I was calling because um, I have very dry feet, and my toe is black. Okay. On each toe on my big toe. And um, I was wondering how can I get that to be a regular color, you know, so I could be able to wear sandals in summer. Well, well, typically the black toenails can be because, of, um, be because of nail fungus. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Everybody talks about it. The black toenails, young and old, suffer from it. Well, there, there, there are a lot of nail treatments out there, but the one I'm going to recommend is uh, my foot care treatment, in which I have a nail treatment with natural tea tree oil. And, and women, women love it. We've gotten excellent reviews. Uh, it helps to reduce the nail fungus under the nail. Um, but it's important to be evaluated by a foot doctor before you actually use any topical treatment. But I, but I, I look forward to you uh, coming in and talking to me. As far as the dry skin, we have a wonderful cream with soy, aloe, and vitamin E. And you can find all these on my website, website at mybadfeet.com. And again, my products receive excellent reviews, and I promise you they'll do exactly what you need them to do. Great, Venus. Listen, thank you so much for your call. We really appreciate it. And, you know, since Dr. Smith has touched on his foot care line, we were going to touch on it a little bit later, but I think this is a great segue into it. You know, Dr. Smith, and just to tee you up a little bit here, has a phenomenal foot care line that he's actually developed himself. You can see it up here on the screen. Dr. Smith, why don't you take it away and tell us about your foot care line? Well, where do I start? I tell you what, the, the most prominent um, product that you see on the screen is the nail fungus treatment. That's a small bottle. It's a one ounce treatment. Uh, excellent treatment, especially for women, especially for your patient population okay. who want to be vain with their feet and want to wear the sandals and things of that nature. 
And a lot of women use uh, acetone-based nail polish remover and that dries up the cuticles. Okay. And the re reason why I bring that up because my nail treatment is, is, is double-edged, does a couple good things. And one of the things that helps moisturize the cuticles mm -hmm. and helps reduce uh, nail fungus with the use of tea tree oil. Okay, and also great. has an almond oil base, so it could also be used for the skin. Oh. And if you, if you know about tea tree oil, it's a natural antifungal, bacterial, and viral. And what we're talking is prevention. You know, planter's warts implanted mm -hmm. to the skin, so why not use a product to help prevent the implantation of planter's warts? Wow. Why not use a product that help can reduce um, the possibility of drying, cracking of your cuticles, which we all know, because a lot of women get pedicures, mm -hmm. that if that cuticle is damaged, we have a lot of problems. Right. So that's, that's a wonderful product in itself. But my skin cream is also wonderful. Uh, it has the elements of soy, aloe, and, aloe, and vitamin E, and everyone knows how those those, oh, yeah. uh, those no elements question. do. Yeah, I mean, we use that in plastic surgery Absolutely. all the time. Absolutely, yeah. it, it just does a great job of moisturizing the skin. The combination of those two products are excellent. We have a foot soak for tired, overworked, overworked feet. I mean, you walk you walk ten ten thousand steps a day. So at ten thousand steps a day, yeah, you, you need something. Those to relieve dogs those are hurting. They hurt. They hurt. <laughs> hey, you, Listen, we got another sure. caller on the line. I tell you, man, you're so popular here tonight. Our next caller on the line is Yaya. Yaya, how are you? Hi, how are you? Doing great. What do you have for Dr. Smith tonight? Well, actually, he answered my question from the last caller about nail fungus. Great. Well, you know what, Yaya, you're definitely going to have to pick up some of his product. Mm -hmm. You can see where you can get it right there on the screen on mybadfeet.com, or you can call his office and come in and check out Dr. Smith himself. I mean, he's a great guy. I've known him. Fantastic. He'll take care of you. His office staff is great. And this is what we're talking about. Patients calling in, interacting here. This is dialogue, and this is what it's truly all about. One of the other things while we're going along on the line, Dr. Smith actually brought in some photographs of what his foot care line will do for you. And if you mm -hmm. could go through that with us, that would be great. Absolutely. All right. Justin, yeah, here we go. Excellent. I mean, I mean typical patient, dry skin, uh, irritating, uh, itchy, uh, and, and, it, and it just, you know, and, and these are the type of patients I created my products for. I write tons of prescriptions. And when you write a prescription, a patient comes back a week, a week later or two weeks later and says, you know, doc's not doing anything for me. Mm -hmm. Those are the patients that I wow, developed my product that for. Wow, look at that result. That is incredible. I mean, it's awesome. And that's the combination of nail treatment and the skin treatment. It, it really does great jobs. And I'm not computer savvy, so I don't doctor any pictures or anything no, like that. These that's are real. You can see it. actually photographs. That's and real. And my patients are really, really happy. And I think we have some more typical women, dry heels. Yeah. Uh, this is a young lady, and she was just, it was just bothering her for long periods of time. She said, doctor, do you have anything? I said, you know, I, I've got something for you. Let's mm -hmm. try this right here. And if, look, look at the at results. That. And wow. you know, the great thing, being a foot doctor, is that I, all, I have tons of patients to try these, these products on and see what works and what doesn't work. And what happens, I, I truly listen to my patients and I enjoy doing things like this. And when you, when you take somebody from what it was before to what it is now, it's extremely happy. Wears their sandals with no problems, no qualms whatsoever. I mean, you can just look at these mm -hmm. results. I mean, in, this looks like, the, is this a the, nail the fungus nail, case the right nail here? nail treatment, absolutely. Yeah, why don't you go through that one? Because this is a real common problem that absolutely. a lot of people have. You can see this, this young lady had uh, subungual um, onychomycosis, which is nail fungus, basically fancy word for nail fungus, and she has it on multiple nails. And what I want you to notice about my product, and you can go to the next picture, is that it, it wow. moisturizes that yeah, nail you can fungus see as well. So it's like, <coughs> again, a cosmetic result in mm. podiatric care and that it helps moisturize the cuticles and protects that nail as well as trying to reduce the nail fungus. Wow, look at the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as a plastic and cosmetic surgeon, mm -hmm. I mean, we look at the fine details and you can really see the improvement there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can tell you, we've got another caller on the line, but this is Dr. Smith's foot care line. I want everybody to check it out. All the viewers at home, Get on the website, buy the foot care line, have your feet looking good. It's getting ready to be sandals weather. You do not want ashy feet. People will talk about you. You do not want fungus on the nails. They will talk about you more. I am telling you, this is the time to get it so that you can get the treatment handled for you. It will work for you. And these are phenomenally good products and it's done by the physician. And I think that's big. So many of these lines that you see out there, they're done by scientists, chemists, they don't have a clue. He's working with patients every day. He knows what makes it right. 
he tries it on his patients, he uses it, he gets the feedback, and he knows that this is the right formulation and it will work for you as well. We have another caller on the line, Charmaine. How are you tonight, my friend? I'm great. How are you? Oh, fantastic. What do you have for Dr. Smith tonight? Well, you know what? Initially, <clears throat> my question was about uh, buying cost, but as I uh, waited, um, you know, for you to come to the line, I saw the fungus in the, in the feasting and something else kind of popped in my mind. When you go to the lines and you get the, the, the razors to take off the dry skin and the abrasive stones and things like that, does that cause long-term problems? Uh, is that therapeutic? Because I'm noticing a lot of things that you're talking about is natural softening and things of that nature. But please, don't forget about the question about the bunion, where do they come from, and is it costly to have them removed? I know it's a lot, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, man, we need a we need a notepad. Here. I know. It, it, okay, the razors that they use in the in, in the salons does that cause any long term issues? Is that was that your question? I think we lost her. I but think go we ahead. Lost her. Well, you know what? The, the the razors. It all depends. As long as they sterilize their equipment, usually the places they get pedicures do a, do a great job. Um, so there's not too many complaints. I've had a few patients um, recently, and I think it's because the summer mm -hmm. is, is coming about or mm -hmm. starting to complain about nail salons maybe contracting fungus. Okay. But I don't think that's all nail salons. Most nail salons use sterilized equipment. And I don't think they really cause any problems. I've had one patient in the past year who had a traumatic event and had to come see me because she had she was damaged by a nail salon. Okay. So you do have to be careful. Choose your place wisely. There are plenty of credible places out there. But, so it sounds like that that's a rarity where you would actually have some kind of problem from from a nail salon occasionally Absolutely. but again just really check it out and mm -hmm. make sure it's a reputable place mm -hmm. and also you, you want people to also remember that when they go to website my website mybadfeet.com mm -hmm. is that they can also ask me questions at the website right. ask dr smith and you click on that and, and ask me a question and i rather enjoy answering those questions great well listen we got mm -hmm. another caller you can answer it live we have <laughs> bonnie on the line bonnie how are you my friend are you with us bonnie yes i'm Hello. still here great Hi. great what do you have yes. for Dr. Smith tonight? Well, I want to know what do he recommend for um, um, for corn on the feet um, without having a laser surgery? Okay, there you surgery. go. Wow. You know, it all depends on the level of the corn. Some some corns are extremely superficial, superficial, and, and and that's one of the ways. That's how I I've modeled my practice. You know, I I tell you exactly what needs to be done. Sometimes people think corn, they think surgery, like you have to have surgery. You don't necessarily need surgery. It could be as simple as using the pumice stone. It could be as simple as changing the shoe gear, maybe some padding or things of that nature. So it all depends on whether or not it's excess skin or it's actually a bone that's causing the actual corn, which is usually the underlying problem, but it may not necessarily need surgical intervention. So, you know, it's one of those things, I mean, I don't want to say you always have to come in and, and be seen but it's important so you can get the correct diagnosis. Yes, you have a corn, but where is it from? Is it from your shoes? Is it a genetic issue? Is it a contracted tendon, a tendon or something of that nature? So you really just have to be looked at. So it's many things here. Okay, listen, the guys are trying to get into the game a little late, but better late than never. Our next caller on the line, oh, Gwen. Oh, I thought he said Glenn. I'm sorry, that cold's in my left ear. <laughs> Gwen, how are you, my friend? Fine, thank you. Good, thank I apologize you. about that Glenn about that Glenn comment. I'm sorry about that. That's but okay. go ahead with Doctor go ahead with Doctor Smith. What do you have? Okay. First of all I want to thank you for your program. That's the first thing. Oh, thank you so um, much. Okay. Doctor Smith, I have yes, severe hammer toes. Do I need to turn my T V down more? I'm yeah. Sorry. What was the last part of your question? You have severe hammer toes, but yeah, and I'm literally almost walking on for my longer toes. I'm walking on the actual tips of my toenails. Very painful. Really? Okay. Yeah. So okay. I wanted to know if there's anything that can be done, and um, I wanted to know what number I could call because I'd like to arrange a consultation. Okay. Great. We'll put the number up on the screen. There you go, right there, uh, Gwen. From what you describe, it, it sounds like there is going to be some level of surgical intervention. I don't mean to scare you with that, but if you say your toes are contracted to a point where they're hitting the ground and causing um, extreme discomfort, uh, 
the procedure itself is where there has to be a slight, a, a small portion of bone taken out and the toe straightened out. But again, if you came in for a consultation, we'll go through that in extreme, extreme detail. And you can actually go to my website, and I'm sure you've heard it, it was mybadfeet.com, where that way you can read about hammer toe deformity before even coming to see me. That way you're educated on it somewhat, and you can come with me with a list of questions, a laundry list, and I have no problem sitting down with you and talking to you. I tell you, that's great, uh, great, Gwen. And the thing of it is, is to be able to have a doctor who will actually sit down, go through your problems with you, spend the time, take the time, and really care about you, I think is just so important. And again, I've known Dr. Smith for quite some time now. He's a great guy. He will spend the time with you. And if his foot care line won't do it, then his surgical procedure or whatever else he recommends for you will definitely be the way to go. We only have about one minute left. Okay. Why don't you give us a little bit more information about your website? Because it sounds like there's a lot of great features on it. Tell us a little bit about that. Let me tell you something about MyBadFeet.com. What I've done is develop a, a website that has um, what's it, a plethora of information. And right now the website's in its infancy. We, ex we plan to expand it uh, enormously to, to, to develop and have tons more information. But basically, if you have questions about bunions, hammer toes, nail fungus, there's, a, there's information there that will answer your questions. And if they have, my website doesn't answer your questions, you have Ask Dr. Smith right there. Click on that button and whatever question you have will be answered shortly. Great. Well, listen, we only have about 30 seconds left. I'm hearing from the control room. I'd like to thank my friend, Man, Dr. Smith, thank so you. much thank for you. coming in tonight. He absolutely did a fantastic job for all of you all who called in tonight. Fantastic questions. They were provocative, innovative, and just excited. I mean, I was just so excited about feet tonight. I didn't even know what to do. I might quit plastic surgery and go and become a podiatrist. I don't know. But listen, for everyone who called in tonight, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week on Plastic Surgery Issues and Answers. Have a great